welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Stable. Today I have a very, very exciting guest. It is Tay! You might also know her as All Paws Outdoors. Yeah. Tay, for anyone who doesn't know you, do you want to give a quick introduction? Hey, I'm Tay. <laughs> um, I am a dog walker and equestrian. Um, I have two lovely ponies and run my own small business in our town. And yeah, I'm 21. I was originally from South Africa, moved to. Oh the my god, U- I never knew that. I never knew that. No, yeah, I'm an African baby. Wait, wait, when did you move? I moved to the UK in 2010. What? Yeah, so I. Hold really, on, I need more on yeah, this. Yeah, so I've only had my British passport for a year and a half. Oh my god. Yeah, so I literally, yeah, the last year and a half, yeah, maybe coming up two years, I've had my. British mm. football. Yeah, I lived there. Oh my god, wait, what was it like life? living yeah. there and growing up there? Wow, well, I was so young. I moved here when I was nine, I think. Yeah, nine. Um, but yeah, I remember everything just on the beach all the time. It was quite a dangerous area. So right. I grew up very differently to like kids here. I remember actually my first day of school, I walked to school with no shoes on. Oh my Me God. and all my sisters walked to school with no shoes on. Um, and my mum got taken into the head teacher's office being like, um, your kids like need to come to school like wearing oh, shoes. school shoes. <laughs> and we had them at home, but you just never wore yeah. shoes. Um, so that, yeah, that was my first like, memory. In the oh my UK god, that's cr- how did yeah. I not know that? But you yeah. need to speak about that more yeah. online because yeah. that's such a good fact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, crazy, isn't it? So, yeah, that's so baby. cool. And then, yeah. wait, what age were you when you moved to the UK then? Um, so, oh, so I was year three or four. So wait, how old was I? Two thousand and ten. Yeah. Guys, I can't do the quick maths. <laughs> it's okay. I'm um, rubbish at maths. I as was well. young, year three, four. Year nice. Three, four. And then, yeah. what was the transition like moving across? Hard, yeah, hard. really hard, yeah. Why did um, you guys move? Was it like a mum's job or something? Um, so yeah, we moved over here because my mum's partner at the time had kids here. Okay. Um, and they were like, we want to go back to England. Like, you know, my kids are there and stuff. And then my mum made the move. My whole family kind of followed over the years. Mm. Um, so yeah, we moved over here, but it was, it was quite hard moving over here. Um, I remember people used to say to me, why do you talk like that? Why do you talk like that? That's why I've not got no, like, yeah. no accent. So my mum's still got an accent. My whole family mm. do. But I lost it because I started just talking like the other kids. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So I moved, so I used to be from Scotland and I moved no to Leicester when I was like 13. Yeah. And I got so bullied about my accent. I changed it to like this horrible yeah. Leicester accent. That's a horrible <laughs> Leicester accent. <laughs> yeah, no, I was the same. So I just started talking like the other kids. I remember mm. someone came up to me once and they were like, why do you talk like that? Because I never used to say like, yes. I used to say, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you say, why do you say yes like that? And I'm like, I don't know. And then anyways, yeah, that's how I've got my accent. So no one would ever know. Like, yeah. they would never pick up on it. No, I would um, never have guessed. No, I feel no. like I've not even seen that on your social. Have you spoke about that on no, socials? No, not really. That I is such know. a good story time. I know, I don't know why. Yeah, I feel like you I need to do a whole story since. time. Yeah, I'm not, sorry to talk over you. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't been back to Africa since I moved here because mm. it's like so expensive to go back over. But um, yeah, I'd love to go back. Did you I miss it? it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I follow like all the kids that I used to go to school with on Instagram mm. and stuff. Like all those like guys and yeah. Yeah, and you talk about that more, don't I? Yeah. yeah how funny. So, yeah. there you go. That's Tay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on the pod. Like, honestly, like, so I'm exciting. Just, I'm a bit nervous. No, you don't need to be nervous at pod. all. But, so um, exciting. Yeah, well done. Honestly, Aww. you've done so well. I, I said that to you at the event, didn't I? Yeah, you Yeah, you had the event, and I was literally like, you've smashed it. So, for yeah. context, I first met Tay at the Harmony event. Yeah. Um, so and good. as soon as I seen Tay, I was like, oh, my God, I love her. <laughs> Because she's like, if you watch Tay's content, yeah. she's literally exactly like that. Am I? Am yeah. I the same? Yeah. You know how That's you meet some people thing. and you're like, oh, you're yeah. not how I expected. Yeah. 100%. You're exactly like so, really? so bubbly, like exactly the same as you are in your content. You don't have a filter. No. <laughs> amazing. I love it. Yeah, no. I, I, that's good though, because I think that's like the main worry with like social media. You'd always want to be so like exactly how you are on socials. Because yeah. that's how you're going to do well, isn't it, really? And being the same in person. That's good. Yeah. I think, yeah, I love that. Appreciate that when you introduce yourself you spoke about like your dog walking and stuff do you want yeah. to talk me through how you got into that yeah so my dog walking business has been open two years no yeah nearly three years this year actually what age are you now um, what age were you when you started so i was 19 when i started okay. I'm 22 this year so yeah 20 uh yeah no two years three years in september and it all came from in covid where we were allowed an hour a day to mm-hmm. go out and do exercise and I used to walk my dog and I used to put a podcast in and I used to walk my dog for an hour and I was just like that was like the best time of the day yeah. during that horrible horrible time um 
And I remember when everything kind of, I was asked to go back to work after being furloughed. Yeah. And I was miserable. I was literally like, I want to do the thing that like brings me the most peace. Yeah. I've never really spoke about this actually. But yeah, the thing that makes me the most like, oh, I just want to do that all day. And I literally, I Googled how to become a dog walker. And it said like what insurance you need and stuff. So I insured myself. And then within that hour, I had insured myself. Mm-hmm. And I just made a Facebook page. And Mad, I made... that's so cool. Yeah, I literally just went into my mum's room, actually. She was just in her room and I went, what should I call a dog walking business? And we just sat there for like 20 <laughs> minutes going like, oh, you know, thinking of names. We went all paused because I was like, oh, maybe I could do horses in it as well. Like, mm. it was so vague. Like, I didn't actually think I was going to do it. I was just kind of like, my, me and my mum's relationship was so like fun and chaotic. Like, yeah. I didn't actually think I was going to be going through with it. And then that day, a couple hours later, I had my first message being like, hey, Please be my dog on Thursday or whatever Amazing. day it was. And I was like, I'm actually doing it. I'm actually <laughs> doing it. And then, yeah. And then how long after you started it did you quit your job? Um, honestly, I was so brave. I wasn't like a very like privileged position where I didn't have many responsibilities. So mm. I was able to quit my job without having like, you know, like a mortgage or yeah. kids and stuff like that. So I was able to just quit my job and then just throw myself into it. So I think I literally left my job after like a month. Yeah. Um. And I just started doing like, depending on my shifts, sorry, <laughs> depending on my shifts, I would just book dogs in around. Yeah. And then eventually I was like, I'm going to just. What was your job this. before? I was a lifeguard. That sounds Tay, hey, you're the most interesting person. <laughs> Why do I not know any of this about you? I literally, boring. as I was driving down, I was like, oh, this is going to be such an easy podcast episode that I watch okay. all of her videos, all of her TikToks. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know her. Like, yeah, it's going to be bestie. so easy. I'm like, I don't know you at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> a so lifeguard. I, was a, I w- wasn't a lifeguard for very long. Um, I love swimming. I'm mm. such a water baby. Catch me in the sea. I'll be in <laughs> under the waves. Nice. Hair is always going to be wet if we're going swimming. I'm that type of girl. Um, yeah, I was a lifeguard for nine months, but because of my brain, mm. I cannot stand there and look at the same things over and over. Like, I was actually going a bit stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that wasn't the job for me. I Like, some people love it. Like, they love that environment yeah. that, like, you know, you're literally saving people. Mm-hmm. Um, and they love that. But I just couldn't... My brain just couldn't do it. Um, so, yeah, that was my job before. That's crazy. <laughs> Dog walking, crazy. And then what did you... Did you go to Hartbury? Or have yeah. I made that up? Yeah, went to Hartbury for two years. How did you find that whole experience? Um, I loved Hartbury as in the course mm. and the facilities like how far Hartbury, is that from were you living house? here at the time or um, with no mom? I was at mum's right. so yeah I for context I live at Joe's house um and I used to live with my mum as well um so I went to Hartbury when I was, was still with my mum yeah um and yeah I went there for two years and I really struggled being away from home my first year I really really struggled my second year wasn't too bad mm. um actually funny enough because I was with Joe with my second year and he went to college half an hour away. Oh, and so I that think makes it that easier. helped me settle a little bit. But that first year, yeah, I really struggled with homesickness. Like, I'm such a home bird now. Mm. Anyone who knows me, I hate going out. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, I'm such a home girl. Um, but yeah, in terms of, like, the course and Hartbury itself, yeah. it's insane. And I think it's actually got better in the last, like, year because they've got so much more, um, like, facilities. I think they've got mm. more courses. And How, come, how did you go from Hartbury to lifeguard? Oh, that's, that's what I mean. I think I was just Cause did looking you go... for work okay, during, fair. like, during, after COVID and stuff. Mm. And because of my South African passport, I really struggled to get work. Yeah. Um, Because a lot of companies, you know, they need a British passport. Yeah. And I didn't have, I didn't have my life in UK test. I didn't have my English speaking test. I didn't even have, like, a biometrics card, which is, like, a form of identity. Okay. I didn't have any form of identity. I didn't have a driving license because I was 16. Sorry, keep it off the mic. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any um identity at all. Um, So I really struggled to get work. Yeah. I The only work I could really get, you know, was, like, cafe jobs. Yeah. Or, like, working on a yard. Like, stuff that you... You know, you don't necessarily need to go through HR, yeah. if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I really struggled to get work. And then when I eventually got my biometrics card, that's how I went to Lifeguard, because it was mm-hmm. kind of the first people who accepted me. And I was, like, 17, and at the time, obviously, COVID was going on. Like, I just needed a job. Yeah. So, yeah, I was in that weird stage of life where I was like, I don't want to go to uni. 
I finished Heartbreak. Yeah. I don't really know what I wanted to do. When you were at Heartbreak, did you want to work with horses or were you kind of just yeah. filling that little yeah. gap where everyone's at? Because yeah. did you do A levels or did you go straight to Heartbreak? I went straight to Heartbreak. Yeah. I left year 11 and I knew I didn't want to do A levels. Um, so yeah, I went straight. So you just to... knew you liked horses and just went yeah. and did that? Yeah. But did Literally. you want to work with horses or were you just 100%. filling the gap? I really wanted to work on like an event yard. Yeah. I wanted to like, I wanted to be with the top dogs, but. I haven't gone down that route. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of like stepped back into it recently. Um, but yeah, being a groom is hard yeah. work. Like hats off to grooms. And honestly, they deserve like a huge pat on the back because it is just 24 seven. seven yeah. And I just wasn't, wasn't willing to like do the 24 seven life. Like mm. so they are they're on that yard with those horses, you know, seven days a week. And it's incredible. Honestly, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. But that, I just kind of went, stayed away from it. And now... I walk around fields yeah. with dogs. What would you it's say great. to like anyone who's thinking about just taking Starting that leap it. and starting it? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. And don't don't make it complicated. As mm. long as you have the important things, like you're insured, you know how you want to do it, you know how to speak to customers and professionally, you know how to care for dogs, like basic things that, you know, if you were looking for a dog walker, you'd think, oh, I'd want that person to be like that. Yeah you know have those things like that you're covered but don't overthink it don't be worried oh what if i don't get what if i don't get customers oh what if i don't do yeah. this like just do it even if you start with one dog a week mm. people will know that you're legit and you're reliable and you're trustworthy and then it will just build and build and build how long did so, it take yeah. you are your books full now pretty much now yeah how long did it take but, to get to that point honestly i'd say like to get a good enough income that I was like, okay, yeah, I do this like as a job. Yeah. I'd say a good like six months. In mm. my first three months, I did have people on my books 100%. Um, but, I, you know, it wasn't like, what's the word? It wasn't reliable income. Yeah. Sometimes they'd book, sometimes they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, like more ad hoc. Um, but, yeah, I'd say, it. honestly, the first six months to a year, you're figuring your, like, out who's who who's going to stay around who's going to go who's going to use you for ad hoc who's yeah. going to be your regulars etc etc um but yeah i'd say i'm 100 percent happy with the customers that i've got now definitely i love my customers so starting your business and stuff what do you think yeah. was the biggest challenge of doing that mm, that's a, such a good question biggest challenge starting my business oh honestly so obviously what we we're just saying about the customers yeah is building that up and showing people that you are legit mm -hmm. um especially because you're like 19 at the time it's proven that you're mature yeah, and that you're 100 like i was turning up to people's houses as a 19 year old girl with my little folder just being like i will look after your dog because especially <laughs> as well like the dog in the canine industry and the equine industry is very different you'd think yeah. it'd be quite similar but like Dogs are literally people's children. Yeah. Like, 100%. Like, I feel like horse people can also be quite tough, you know? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. But, like, the, the dogs are literally people's children. So yeah. So you have to be, like, you have to consider that. So, yeah, when I was turning up, like, oh, with my little folder. Yeah, I think that's the hardest. It's, like, proving to people that you are legit. And also that it's a real job. That's, yeah. That was a real challenge. Like, even two days ago, I had someone, like, say to me, oh, you're just the uh, dog person, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that is my but job. Actually, that is my, like, yeah, yeah. That, that was really, that's a big challenge is like proving yourself, even though you mm. shouldn't have to. And I, I am quite good at like being like, oh, I don't really care. Yeah. Thing. But I would say, like, yeah, that is hard. That is the biggest challenge is proving that you are legit and you are actually giving someone a service that they need. Mm -hmm. Like, if they didn't have you, what, what's the dog going to do? Yeah. You know, like, you, if you don't have me, your dog's going to be at home how long mm. throughout the day or whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely proving yourself to people that you're legit. Yeah, you spoke about like your mum and yeah. how you went through to her and was like yeah. brainstorming ideas. Yeah. What was her reaction when you were like, yeah, I'm actually doing this by the way? My mum was like, are you gonna make any money? <laughs> <laughs> like, are you gonna... But yeah, she loved it. My mum has been self-employed as well. Mm -hmm. um, so she was like, yeah, go for it, 100%. Obviously there's always that like mum worry of like, oh, like, yeah. do you think you'll do a lot? Do you think you'll, you know, be financially stable with that? Mm. But um yeah, she yeah, she loved it. She's been self employed, like I said, Aww. so she knows that and she knowing like how we are is we are so much better working for ourselves. Yeah. Because Tony now, me and my mum are so stubborn. <laughs> like no one's gonna tell us what to do. <laughs> we always joke about that, like we need to be our own boss. Yeah. Which is funny now because my mum's actually 
gone back into like employed work. Okay. But she's manager. So but. she gets to say, <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, definitely. That is, um, yeah. Mm. What about like your friends? What did they think? Oh, my friends, they found it cool. Did they? Yeah, they found it cool. And also two of my best friends, George and Katie, um, <laughs> they are also self-employed. So they started up their, their businesses like quite soon, uh, mm. like a bit of time before me. Um, but they're self-employed as well. So they're yeah. dog groomers. So I'm a dog walker. They're the groomers. Dog groomer. And they love it. Because obviously, mm. like, we spend all day every day on phone to each other. And we can relate. And yeah, they love yeah. it. They oh, love amazing. It, yeah. And what, because were you with um, your boyfriend? Yeah, Joe. What did he think? He, oh, what, what was happening at the time when I started up? I think everyone didn't really realise how I was going to make any money. Right. Like, I, I think they were just a bit like, do dog walkers like make money? Like mm. how does dog walking work? Like, I think everyone was really like, you know, really sort of thing. Um, supportive, 100%, yeah. but very just like, oh, like where's this come from sort mm. of thing. But yeah, no, Joe's always been really supportive and he's just like, yeah, do it. And I think as I got customers, he was like, oh, it's a real thing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 girl, it's a real <laughs> thing. But yeah, supportive, definitely. Yeah. And then what about your, because now you've got your socials and stuff as well. Yeah. When did they start? How did they start? My socials literally started from li- how to set up a dog walking business. Oh, really? That's what yeah, you started with? so I remember Was that on TikTok? On TikTok, yeah. I don't even know how it all started, because I, I made an Instagram to just post the dogs, for mainly for my customers, really. Mm. Um, and, yeah, so I... Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> what was I just saying? My socials. What you made an about? Instagram for your clients. <laughs> That's it. Made an Instagram for my clients. Then I moved to TikTok, and I literally was like, at 19 years old, I have managed to, like, quit my job, get customers, mm. make my own money, be my own boss, and it hasn't been that hard. Because yeah. Because... When everyone's like, oh, my God, you made a business. Yeah. Like, that sends people's brains, like, like and scares mm. people because making a business is intense. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't, like, my, building up my dog walking business wasn't as intense and scary as people were saying, like, you know, you're going to have to pay tax and you're going to have to do books and you're going to mm. have to make your own days and you're going to have to fit work in and you're going to have to blah, 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 blah. I was just, like chill yeah <laughs> like chill you can do it 100 percent. and i just wanted to put that on tiktok and be like you can easily do it mm. and then people saw that it was actually possible yeah and that's how i kind of grew and then obviously because of the horses as well i've oh, sorry <laughs> because of the horses as well i've managed to go into that a little bit more which is nice yeah, yeah. and they've grown your socials you now do youtube how are you finding youtube i love youtube i love YouTube. i love your content on yeah. youtube it's because i can do this yeah, I can chat, 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 mm. and that's what I'm like. I got unfiltered. Literally, that is me, and I just it just comes and comes and comes. Yeah, comes. so it's a, just a longer version, really. Mm. Yeah, I love YouTube. TikTok can be quite scary sometimes. What like hate or in in just in terms of like people will say their opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. Even if it's not needed on that video, but like YouTube, I feel like they're more supportive. Mm. I love I've heard a lot of people tic- say yeah. that. I love my TikTok community. Like, don't get me wrong, and I will never stop posting on TikTok. But if someone has something they want to say, yeah, best believe it's in your comments section. Comment section. Yeah, hundred percent. So that was yeah, yeah. TikTok's scary. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. But yeah, YouTube is more like homely. Yeah, if that makes sense. But no, TikTok is my OG. So. Yeah, you see, your TikTok, TikTok started off like very dog walking. Very dog walking. It's now very equestrian. How very did we make that jump and what did your followers um, think about that jump? No, I, it's kind of, I saw how well it was doing and I love it. Like mm. horses are literally like, I love it. And I think, you know, people who know me, they know how much I love it. I'm yeah. so dedicated to it. Um, and also the dog walking kind of in terms of like social media is so saturated i mean i suppose you could say the same about horses yeah but it was re- you're really finding it hard to create content in the dog walking industry that other people aren't doing already yeah um and i felt like i wasn't being tape even though me just being myself mm-hmm. excuse me me just being myself is just me and that will always be original mm. filming content for just a dog walking business can be very the same yeah um and i feel like with the horses obviously you know what horses are like you could have a new story every day talking about your horse yeah you know let me just bring that forward a little bit <laughs> okay um 
yeah so with horses like it changes all the time and i feel like you can create more content because you can go to a different show yeah you can go to a different clinic you can do a different hack you can do all these sorts of things whereas like setting up a dog walking business there's only so much content you can create can around it. that group walks as much as every walk is different depending on what dogs you've got or depending on where you go something might happen etc etc you know oh hi guys like come with me on my dog mm. walk whereas like you could uh, come with me to this show come with me to this clinic come yeah. with me to do this camp there's just more i feel like yeah um and i think because i'm naturally more passionate about horses in terms of like my hobby mm. i feel like i'm just more excited about it through socials and people can see that yeah does that make sense yeah a hundred percent i feel like i just went on such a tangent then <laughs> but you get you get what i yeah. mean would yeah. you have any tips for anyone who's wanting to start socials be literally yourself and like how you are at home yeah like behind closed doors like if you're a weird how do you get the confidence to like do that first because oh, i love your content and your little dances <laughs> and stuff you do it's yeah. amazing how I do you have the confidence sorry. like post that do you want to say it again sorry interrupt so, okay, you go you go <laughs> <laughs> i'm like keep talking <laughs> over you i literally don't care what people think mm. like and i know that's like i'm lucky to feel like that because a lot of people yeah. do but i literally could like there's not one someone could say something to me i'm like cool yeah like that's my biggest advice is literally someone's opinion should not matter unless mm. they're really important to you and that's kind of my mindset like if like my best friend or joe or one of my family members came up to me and said like sit down like you need to chill out over that sort of thing yeah i would take that personally but if it's someone online you don't know someone who sees you in the street i'm just like your opinion's so irrelevant what if like <laughs> your best mates were like mm, that's a bit weird oh god 100 percent. i would sit down and i'd be like sort it out yeah 100 percent. i'd be like switch up 100 <laughs> like, sort yourself out but that's because obviously i care what they think yes and obviously random as i literally don't care mm. i don't and I, I don't want that to sound like cocky yeah or anything like that but um yeah people who i care about the most their opinion matters more to me so mm -hmm. that's why on my tiktok and my youtube and stuff like I love my little community of people who support me. Yeah. But if it's like hate whatever, I'm like, I don't know you. Like you mm. don't you don't know me, I don't know you. Just yeah. like we were talking off camera about how like I am I, how I am how I am in real in real life. Yes. Um and it's like so surreal that like this is in my YouTube and stuff. Mm. Just cuz I that's how I try and keep it. Like real yeah. on socials, real in real life and not care what people think. So yeah, if you're wanting to start that's my best just advice. do it just do it yeah it's really hard when people say that though because like when you're like oh just do it you're just like yeah but it's not as easy as just yeah just no. doing it like of course it's not easy and i get that um but i'd say maybe start like maybe don't don't talk mm. maybe just do like music yeah or text in like the videos or then you can like grow your confidence yeah that's a good idea yeah, but, yeah don't care what people think so you've got your socials, you've got your dog yeah. walking. What's yeah. a typical day for you? Oh, God, so my days change every day. Um, so, like, should we use yesterday? No, you should use today as an example. Okay. So up at seven every morning. Um, go straight to Lux, literally my PJs, Equa Dry, on. <laughs> we like to say other logos, other people's That's things. fine. Are you yeah. sure? Sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry again. Um, yeah, so <laughs> up at seven, go straight to Lux in my PJs, coat on, get her out. Depending on how I feel, I'll sort out all my jobs then if I really can't be asked. Yeah. I'll go back later and do it. And then I come back and my walks tend to start anywhere between 9 and 10. Often it's like 10. Mm -hmm. And my busiest time of day, it's quite obvious, is probably like 10 to 2. Because that's when yeah. people need a dog walker the most. Um, so my busiest time of day is between 10 and 2. Obviously if I've got bookings after, I'll do them. Um, and then usually come back. If I'm being not lazy, I'll do like my books and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's very rare. <laughs> I'm going to be very authentic. That doesn't happen very often, but that is meant to be my time to like get my life together yeah, between like two it. and four. Um, obviously in the winter, people up the yard like three, half three sometimes because mm -hmm. it's pitch black to get the horses in. So winter, obviously there's less time, but um, now that's got a bit lighter, I have a couple of hours at home and then I'm straight back to the yard to either ride, sort of lux out. Um, but I've also got a little part-time job okay. on the yard, um, just because I wanted like a little bit of a change. Dog walking can be very lonely. Yeah. Um, so I picked up two days at a yard. I've now actually gone to one day. <laughs> I've now actually gone to one day. Um, so I'm there on a Thursday. So Thursdays are chaotic. Mm. But yeah, horses work back to the horses back here and where I'm outside all day come like 
6 p.m. Mm. You best believe I'm not going outside. Yeah, fair. <laughs> fair I've been enough. outside all day in the rain, in the wind, especially in the winter. Obviously, summer, completely different. Mm. But yeah, in the winter, home by six, and that's me done. In bed. And I, yeah, and that's like in the evenings, I go to my mum's. Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, how do you find doing your little yard job? I love it. Yeah. Hard, again, like I was saying, like hats off. What are you doing? Just like mucking out and bits yeah, like that? Yeah, I'm literally just one of the girls. I'm yeah. just one of the team. Yeah, just mucking out, turning out, bringing in. Um, and I do like split shifts, so I do go in the morning till ten, seven thirty till ten, um, and then the other girls like sort everything else during the day, and I go yeah. do my dogs, and then I go back three till five, put them all to bed, hay up, water, sweep the yard, muck out, change mm. rugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah, that was just to have a change up really, because yeah. like yeah, dog walking you are on your own a lot, so you I could go like before I was living here, and I was actually lived at my own little place. I could go like a week when Joe was away, mm. not talking to one person. Yeah. If like if I hadn't seen my mum that week or haven't seen any friends that week, and I li- did live on my own, I could literally not talk to anyone mm. for like a week. So having that like socialization again, yeah. And I know people who are dog walking or pet sitters will relate that you can't talk to the dogs for long. Yeah. They don't talk back. So <laughs> yeah, just having a little change up has been nice. Um, but yeah, again, hats off because it's hard work. Hard work physically, like very very hard yeah very hard. but yeah with Love your it. dog walking yeah i want to know your worst horror story whether it's like a dog's run off and you've lost it or oh. worst client yeah that's so funny you said that because my worst situation where my heart literally like ooh, was in my belly is that the saying anyways <laughs> um i did lose a dog yeah oh, you have lost a yeah, dog. i've lost a dog and he was gone for 45 minutes that's say. not bad. One of my friends does oh, really? like dog sitting. Yeah. Um and she has so she has her own little yard. Yeah. So she just has all the dogs on there all day basically. And the really? dogs just run around all the fields all day. Really? It's really lovely. Oh. Um and one went missing and they lost it for like five hours. <gasps> it ended up like four villages along. <laughs> Flipping hell. Yeah. No, honestly, and it's when it because it's someone else's dog as well, like mm. actually terrifying. Um yeah, so I lost him at the hills, so it was literally just open space like for miles and miles and miles obviously we live near the plains yeah so, and it was like, it was on the plains and he had just gone and then literally owners were on their way from work mm. um and he just came trotting behind me like literally <laughs> i could see like he came over this bridge and he, he just came trotting and he was out but so he's obviously been running for like yeah. four or five minutes but yeah that is kind of like my scariest do you have yeah. to tell the client if you lose oh god yeah, yeah. I ring them straight away yeah r- you have to ring them straight away because Obviously, they've got tags on. Mm. And what you don't want is if you do lose a dog and someone finds the dog and calls the tag. Yeah. And the owner picks up and goes, you know, your dog's... Yeah. I've got your dog. They're like, well, it should be with the walker. Mm. And then you don't want them to panic. So you always yeah. want to be the first one to get there. to them and say, look, this is the situation. And just be honest, like, if they've given you consent for the dog to be off lead, they've given you consent for the dog to be off lead. So yeah. there is that risk. And that's what you always have to say at meeting. It's like... But if you're saying that your dog has recall and you're allowing them mm. to be off lead, there is that risk. And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just as long as you're honest. How did your client react? Do they Panicked. Panicked. Obviously. Um, they never, like, blame me because, obviously, they trust me. They see yeah. on the socials, like, you know, it's not a normal thing. Um, but, yeah, they were just like, right, we'll be there ASAP. A lot of mm. them do really panic. And I've had a couple criers. Before. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, this is for, like, less severe situations where maybe they've wandered off for five minutes and then they yeah. come back but as soon as i do not see a dog you have to call them mm-hmm. personally um so yeah that was kind of my scariest one because it was the longest amount of time yeah and losing a dog is just obviously terrifying yeah terrifying <laughs> what about your worst yeah. client i had a customer once who i had for a very long time and had a couple issues before um but you know i was willing to work with it yeah know, absolutely fine i'm a yes man so i'm very <laughs> like you know laid back um but one day turned around and said that their dog didn't fit in with my aesthetic what does that even mean so basically they thought that i didn't think their dog looked like it fit in with my socials right bear in mind i will take on any dog yeah any breed any like anything i don't don't mind what dog it is like i will try and work with it the best i can mm. and they turned around and said that um because they weren't being shown on my socials so instagram and yeah. facebook they followed me on um because they weren't being seen on my socials they didn't like that <laughs> and they dropped me um because yeah 
their dog Didn't wasn't aesthetically. Aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, no photos or anything like. Bear in mind, what did I'd you say? Send her, I'd always send them photos. Yeah. Um, and they'd always get updates. I wasn't ever like not communicating mm. or anything, but because it wasn't on my socials, yeah, and they could see that I was doing well on my socials. Yeah. My dog's not good enough for your socials. <laughs> Never the case. <laughs> Never ever the case. It was just one of those things that I just I don't know. I didn't yeah. even think about it. I didn't even think about it. But yeah, that was kind of like a big like, oh my god. Yeah. I can imagine God, I'd be mortified. <laughs> I know, I know. I what so did they like... phone you? Was it in person? No, all over text. Oh, that's not as no. at least you've got time to think yeah. and read and Yeah, hundred percent. But it did like I was like, oh my Whoa. god. <laughs> so now I've got to be yeah, just vigilant of who I post, how many times I post them and Oh that yeah. Not it a bit but like you work. should be able to post what you want to post yeah 100% yeah no all my customers now like the the ones that I've got now where they're like they're my OGs yeah and I know them they know me and I know that they wouldn't do that so mm. yeah let's have a chat about Joe so I met Joe at Harmony event yeah he's lovely love Joe <laughs> just walked past him as I was coming yeah. in as well he's so nice. he's so nice how did you and Joe meet um we went to school together and we didn't acknowledge each other at all <laughs> for like five years, and then it was. Were only you in the when... same classes and stuff, or just? No, he, so he's older than me. He's the year above. Oh, okay. He's the year above me in school. Um, yeah, so he, he's twenty four this year. So <laughs> I'm twenty four this <laughs> year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't speak Sorry. to Amelia. I'm Amelia sat over there, guys. Oh, you. Um, <laughs> you're twenty eight. No, you're not. You're twenty eight. <laughs> Sorry, I just called you both old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just because I'm such a baby. And what age are you? I'm 21. Oh my god, I don't know why I thought you were my age. No, girl, I'm 21. 21. 21. Mm. Yeah, I'm a baby. I never want to grow up ever. No, fair. I, I don't want to grow up anymore. I'm I don't quite happy up. to say this. It makes age. me so sad. I actually <laughs> cry. I want to be like stupid and irresponsible forever um but yeah so no, now so... Tay's insulted us all <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that um yeah so joe yeah he was year above me in school and we didn't wait year above you you're 21 and he's gonna be 24 this year he's one of the oldest in this year what and you're one of the youngest i'm literally the baby yeah so like complete opposite um well yeah so her, yeah 24 in november yeah then i'm gonna be 22 in july yeah so he would have been in my year at yeah, school he, yeah, your year. yeah right okay yeah. um so yeah we met basically how did it all happen god so long ago now um he texts me basically no hang on let me just think about this <laughs> right yes yeah, so we went to school together didn't acknowledge each other for like five years um and then we had like a little thing for a couple of months um when he was going to college so he was going to a college like near Hartbury mm. um and I was still doing my I was still in year 11 doing my GCSEs um, and he texted me and we had like a little thing for like a couple of months, weren't ever like boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, and then we were like, look, I'm going to college in a couple of months. You're already at, yeah. at college. And we were like, is it really like worth getting into a relationship? So wait, were you car? friends before then? If you had your number? Kind um, of. We saw each other at like parties. Right. I always what, that little house him. party? Yeah. I used to we, love a good house party. Honestly, oh, this is the best. Yeah. I oh, want to go back to that age where house parties are a thing. My house was that was the house. So my house, house was, was the it? house. Oh my god! House so parties good. were literally the best. Yeah. My mum would be there with us. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mom, yeah, literally, yeah. I love a house party. We used to have a lot of them. Mm. But you, he used to have like cool parties, like right. he had, like a really nice house. Um, not this one, the other one. And he used to always have like the really fun, loads of people parties with like a marquee and all oh, these sorts of things. And yeah, he was the popular kid. Okay. He was the popular kid. Um, he would disagree if he was sat here now, but he was. <laughs> um, and yeah, always had that like, oh, fancy him, fancy him, fancy him. And then he messaged me when I, when he saw that I, yeah, so we went to college mm. after those that weird few months. Went to college, didn't speak to each other for like a year and a half. And then when he saw that I had split up with my ex. Right. Um, he got in there straight away. <laughs> he messaged me. He was messaging me. He was like, hey, have you and your ex broke up? And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, straight yeah. in there. Oh, straight <laughs> in there. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went on this dog walk. Dog walk. I didn't even bring a dog. I didn't even bring a dog. Um, and I took him to the yard of this pony that I was sharing. Mm. And he was terrified of horses. He's much better now. But he was terrified of horses. 
And he just walks over and he was like, where the hell is this girl taking, taking me? me? <laughs> just walked through the field, went and said, hey. And then, yeah, five Aww. years in. Crazy. Love it. And yeah. Jay does football. American, American football. football, yeah. How, what, how did he get into that? What's that all about? Uh, he, he, I think this is the story. Don't quote me, but he used to watch on YouTube when he was younger. Okay. Like when he was like 14 15 that sort of age he used to watch it on youtube and then i think him and a couple of mates mm. went um to like this like fun like thing i think it was like in swindon or something and they just played it for the day and then he's just loved it ever since yeah and that's what he's really good at and oh. now he play, plays pro where because he crazy. you spoke about how that when he was away and stuff where yeah. did it where did he used to play football so he was mainly based in Bristol um, yeah. when he first started and he was there for a good few years. And then from Bristol, we obviously had COVID and stuff. Mm. And then he wanted to f- go to like college in America. So that right. was his big thing. So he went to an American college called Dickinson College mm. um, and he was there for a year, but he just never got along with the uni side of things. And over there, it's like hard, like so much harder than yeah. the UK apparently. Um, apparently, apparently, apparently. <laughs> um, but I don't know. He, yeah, so he was there for a year and played for the college team. That was intense. And then, yeah, because he decided that he didn't get along with the like uni side of things, mm. he decided to come home. And then he played for Ger- Germany, yeah, which is his most recent thing. And throughout the years, like where he, they, he's had like gaps, he's always played for GB, okay, um, in the UK, obviously. Um, he's always played for them. He's actually playing for them again this year. Mm. Um, but yeah, so America didn't get along with the uni stuff. Came home, decided to go pro and played for Germany. Yeah. Um, and now hopefully he's got a combine next weekend, mm. and then that's hopefully aiming towards Canada. Wow. Yeah. So he's all over the place. Will you go to Canada with him, or you stay here? Um, yeah, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's really not speak know. about that one. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm happy to talk about it because yeah. the thing is with football, you don't know. It changes mm. within days. Like when we found out that he was going to Germany, we literally found out the, like a week or two before he was flying yeah. out. Like it's all over like this, I can't remember the website, but it's all like coaches will just message right. him on WhatsApp or Instagram or um, like the website, um, like Euro players mm. and just contact him and be like, we want you on our team, we want you on our team. And then he can like pick. But yeah, basically it, within like one or two weeks, he finds out where, yeah. he's, where he's going, when he's flying out and then it's like boom, gone. How long is normally a contract? Um, every contract is different. Um, he was away for seven months. When he what, in Germany? Germany? Yeah. What was that like when he was away? Long distance is hard. Like I always say to the girls, um, like if they were to come to me now and they'd met someone new and yeah. they said, look, we're going to start this whole new relationship, but I'm going to be away for this amount of time. I'd say mm, don't do it. Don't do it. Just because it's so hard. Like, don't get me wrong, I'll li- I'll, I will do it 100%, mm. but I think that's because me and Joe have grown, in- to get- grown together Yeah. it, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, it, yeah, it's tough. tough. It's hard. But that's where, like, my job and the horses, that's why I'm so, like, into it. Mm. It's because when he is where, like, I need that. You've got that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, you're lucky that you've got, like, um, the horses and stuff there for yeah. when Joe was away. Yeah, 100%. Literally, like, without my little Sonic. Yeah, honestly, tell me about Sonic. Yeah, I want to know more about Sonic. Sonic is the horse you can do anything with. And I don't You got him from that. a riding school, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, got him from riding school, my auntie's riding school. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tay, you need to drop these I details know, into I your know. concert. Yeah, my auntie's got a riding school, um, like, a London way. Mm. Um... And she literally said to me, she was like, do you want this pony? I do oh, not like it. More. Yeah, <laughs> my little man. Um, but he, but we, it turns out that he did actually have some like soreness in his back. Okay. So he was not suitable for riding school because mm. he was throwing everyone off. Right. <laughs> Understandably. Um, so once we kind of figured out why he was throwing a little buck in mm. whenever he felt like it. Um, yeah, he's the horse you can do anything with. So yeah, I got him... On loan, actually, in lockdown. Yeah. I had him for four months. And then, obviously, lockdown, like, eased. Riding schools opened again. And she, he had to go back. Right. Oh, my God. Hardest day ever. He went back. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, like, a year later, she rang me again. She was like, you need to drop this pony back. I was like, I can't afford to buy. She went, you can have him for a pound. <gasps> Amazing. And, yeah, he's my one pound pony. Um, yeah, so he... I don't have him right now. He's currently mm. on loan. He won't ever be sold because a lot of people always ask me, you know, will he ever yeah. be sold? Like, do you still own Sonic? Blah, blah, blah. I do 100% still own him. Mm. He's just on full loan 
to my sharer who is absolutely spoiling him like honestly he has got they went to the tax shop <laughs> and got everything for him yeah. like he is so spoiled he's on like full livery oh amazing. yeah is he still around this area 20 minutes away oh perfect 20 minutes away see him like once a week if i want to if i've got time i'll go see him i'm um, going to see him on sunday like Aww. it's the literally the best um and you know we still chat as mm. well and he's got really knowledgeable people that have eyes on him yeah um so that if anything does go wrong there's someone there who knows exactly what they're mm. doing and all that sort of stuff um but yeah i decided to put him on full loan just because i wanted to step things up a little bit yeah and i know that sonic would do it like if i you know wanted to go around and what age is sonic 20 this year mm. yeah 20 this year i always get that wrong um yeah 20 yeah 20 this year um yeah so if i wanted to do like right sonic i'm gonna put this you know in my head and i'll take sonic yeah he will do it for me but he doesn't give me that like give me a job give me a job i want to yeah. do this like let's do something he's quite happily sit in his field for the mm-hmm. rest of his life like he's not so bothered. what's he doing with his new loan just literally hacking, just, yeah hacking chilled hacking she's got a little girl and he's her first pony Aww. so she's learning you know how to muck out how to groom how to tack up how to yeah you know how to be safe when you are hacking and stuff like that and that's his job at the moment it's just literally like teaching her that mm. and you know i can go and do the things that i want to do without feeling like i'm pushing him too far yeah i'd never want to push him and like do stuff that he doesn't want to do or that he's not up for doing and you know he's a 14 2 cob yeah i know he's not the most athletic i know that and i wouldn't ever want to push it mm. um and obviously me being so passionate about horses and even though i'm not competitive in it mm. i do have little goals like i'd love to event yeah i would literally and that's what i'm going to do this year like i told myself i want really want to event mm. um and i know that he would do it for me but yeah i just don't ever want to push him okay like, so let's speak about yeah. the new loan yeah tell oh, yeah, me about that yeah. <laughs> yeah so i've got a new horse she's a 15 2 irish sports horse cross thoroughbred yeah um she is currently on loan because i get a lot of questions about that as well um she's on like a six week trial and then once okay. the six week trial is over i can basically decide if i want to buy her or not oh I've that is literally that the most ideal yeah way to get a horse. i know i feel very very luck- lucky yeah. to have her um she's actually my best friend's cousin's horse Right. Yep. So Georgie is her cousin. Um, and I've actually known her, the horse, mm. um, since she arrived at my best friend. So we've went mm. to school together. And yeah, when I used to go around her house and play ponies with all the little ponies Aww. that she had, I remember when she turned up, Lux, yeah. she turned up as a four year old. Um, and yeah, so I've, all, I've literally known her. She's 13 now. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've seen her all these years and i've seen her go out and have fun i've seen her go out and vent and stuff like that so when i got the message being like are you interested in lux i was like yes i am yes i am I like, <laughs> um so yeah i feel very very lucky to have her and she's very she's very very nice and she's definitely going to be the horse that's going to teach me the ropes mm. of eventing so um, how long have you had her now four weeks on sunday four weeks. so coming up four and weeks, yeah. i've seen you out at clinics and stuff already what yeah, tell me what you've been up to I know, crazy so we have done two outings together mainly at home hacking mm-hmm. but we've done two outings together we went up to the plains um just so i could see what she was like one in a new environment yeah with another horse you know trotting in an open place obviously she's on a fitness plan at the moment because she did have a break um so we have literally just been walking and trotting yeah um i did have our first little canter at a clinic the other night nice. um and she was such a good girl yeah she was a really good girl spooky she wasn't yeah she really proved herself um and then when what's our plans what's our plans coming up we're just little outings here and there out and about. clinics hacking and then i'll start doing like a little dressage competition on her yeah and then a little show jumping competition on her but her fitness is kind of like the main priority at the moment yeah just because obviously we don't want to do, get anything wrong so just getting her fit enough mm. and yeah that's so exciting yeah, she's a really sweet mare as well yeah like when i obviously i was a bit worried about getting a mare mm. um because obviously i've been so used to like gelding, gelding. vibe um, but she's such a sweet mare, and you'll see when you're going to meet her. Like, oh. yeah, she'll be really sweet. She'll be so sweet. She loves a she loves a groom as well. Like, she'll groom you. She's oh, like bless too much, her. too much. She'll like put your teeth into your shoulder, like if you're grooming her. So mm. yeah, she's really sweet. So what are your plans with her for by the end of 2024? What do you hope you've done? Event. What what level? I would love to do the Cotswold Cup. Okay. Cotswold Cup. Watch. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I would, I really want to do the Cotswold Cup because yeah. they're kind of like a lot of the areas that they're doing them are within two hours. If someone hasn't um, heard of the Cotswold Cup, oh, do you want to give some Yeah, context? so Cotswold Cup is, oh, I'm going to get this wrong now. Um, <laughs> it's eventing. Yeah. And it's unaffiliated, so it's not BE. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still, in my head, got like an, a level of competitiveness because yeah. you can get to the championships at the end. Cool. Um, and they ha- hold them in different areas. I know Pontispool is one, Waverton is one, Aston Lee Walls are what is one. Um, those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But yeah, they've got, I think, like 10, maybe, yeah. I think, roughly. And what do they do then? Take the top score in Yeah, through. top score in, yeah. And then you kind of get into the championships. I think that's how it works. Obviously, research it if you are interested in doing the Cotswold Cup. Yeah. Um, but I just, in my head, I know that it's a little bit competitive, but it's not BE. Mm. It's really chilled and they're at really nice locations as well. So yeah. it, for like someone who is new to eventing, yeah, I perfect. feel like it would be perfect for them. What yeah. kind of height do you want to do? She happily sits at 90. She right. has gone up to 100, um, but she happily sits at 90. But I'm going to be starting real small. Mm-hmm. I'm like 17, 80s. Um, and then, yeah, build it up. Even this year, if I'm happily sitting at 80 with her, yeah. fine. If I feel extremely brave, then mm. maybe I'll go up to 90. But um, yeah, I'm not going to push anything. Yeah. I'm very chilled. Like I'm I'm the least competitive person. Mm. And it's so, so bad because in the equine world, you have to be competitive. See, I'm not competitive <sighs> either. I couldn't care less. Yeah, no. I mean? Like... Yeah, if I have a good day, I have a good day, I have a bad day, I'm like, cool. Yeah. Cool. But I feel like it's good to be like that because you never feel like any day is wasted. But I feel like for me, even if I come first, I'm just like, because eh. yeah. I'm not no, competitive. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I go to the horse, not myself. I'm yeah. like, oh, you did you so did good. You did so good. Yeah, you made us come first. Yeah. yeah. But I think, yeah, I feel lucky to be in that position because I know some people have to take it very seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a we're in good situations, mm. not being competitive. Yeah, yeah. it's a good place least, to be. It's less stressful as well, right? Yeah, literally, like it doesn't matter. You can just go for a bit of fun yeah. and not have to worry about not it. Not have to worry about anything. Yeah. yeah, doesn't matter how I ride today. What will be will be. Mm. Perfect. I've seen you doing cross country before on yeah. Little Sonic. I think your little camp that you went to. Yeah. Can you chat about that because that looked yeah. really fun. Oh my god, I love my camps. <laughs> yeah, I love camp. I've got two this year actually. Do you? Yeah, I've got two this year. We normally do one in March. We go to Pontus Pool and do their Aventus one. Mm. Um, it got Is that the one books. that you did last year? Yeah, that was yeah. in March. Um, this year it was with Cam and Beer as well. Okay. <sighs> I was gutted I couldn't go. That's in March. But um, yeah, not going to that one. And then we've got a dressage one in June and then events yeah. one in August. But yeah, camps are really fun. It's just so like friendly and yeah. social and you meet so many people and there's people like different ages as well. Yeah. Like I feel like in the horse world, it doesn't matter what age you are. The horse world's weird for ages. This is crazy. <laughs> one of my besties is literally she's like seventy odd. Yeah. Yeah. And she we like chat all the time. And it's fine. Yeah, I do a horses, horses for her. Yeah. <laughs> we like keep our horses next door to each other and like yeah. We were actually having that conversation the other day mm. about how it doesn't matter what age you are. You could be best friends with a twelve year old. Yeah, that literally. That's crazy. Yeah. And you, you like just but through it's fine. horses. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So yeah. strange. Horse world's crazy. So guys, if you didn't know that this podcast is powered by Atlantic Harmony Equestrian, if you haven't heard of Atlantic Harmony, make sure you head across to our website and check it out. Tate is modelling our clothing right now. She's looking fabulous. (laughs) So yeah, go check out Atlantic Harmony. It's www.atlanticharmonyequestrian.co.uk. Mate, you look really sexy as well. Right, Tay, I've got some dilemmas for you. Oh my God, don't scare me. Guys, by the way, these dilemmas, they're all a bit of fun. It's all lighthearted. Don't, don't take anything it. we say too seriously. Yeah. Um, and if you guys do have a dilemma that you want to see me chat about with another guest or maybe with Tay again, um, send them across to the Instagram um, Beyond the Stable and we'll have a look through it and pick out some Love dilemmas. that name, by the way. Oh, Beyond the Stable. Yeah, that's really creative. Yeah, I love that. Right, you ready? Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a 25 year old and I've had my horse for two years. So she got a horse when she was 23. 23. Yeah. Um, he'd seen a lot with his previous owner and he'd done lots of hacking and fun rides, but hasn't done a huge amount of schooling. I bought him as an event prospect because he had saw lots of potential in him and he has good breeding. I've done everything very slowly and t- he's took to schooling well. We started off doing some dressage, which he excelled in and even picked up firsts every weekend. About six months ago, I started introducing some jumping, which I'd been told he'd done bits of before. 
Sounds like an ideal okay, kind of yeah, situation so good. far. Very good. Um, Think nice and slow as well, which yeah, is nice. Which yeah. is nice. Um, he was a little bit spooky at first, but once he'd done, once he'd seen things a couple of times, he was quite happy, showing lots of scope. But the last six months or so, his spooking and refusing has returned, and it is now with every single fence. I've also noticed he's started tripping lots in the school, and I'm concerned that something's not right. He's had lots of... Sorry. Mm -hmm. He's had his back and saddle checked, his feet done, vets seen him, and they all say that he's just a bit stiff, but nothing's actually wrong, and to keep on riding. I still think there's something wrong, um, and I'm finding it hard with people telling me to just kick him on and get over with the behaviour issues. What do I do next? Definitely don't keep riding. No, I don't think so either. Definitely don't keep riding. I think like... It, her, him, sorry. (laughs) As a rider, I feel like your intuition is normally right. Like if you think there's something not right, it's probably not right. So if this was your horse, what would your next steps be? Um, I would be getting second opinions from the vet. Yeah, a different Definitely vet. stop riding. Yeah. Um, definitely stop riding. If your gut feeling is that there is something wrong, nine times out of ten it's because there is. Even yeah. if it is something really small and it's not actually, there's not a big fix. Mm. You know, something clearly isn't right. Um, yeah, I'd be thinking of a second opinion for the vet, from yeah. a different vet. Um, and maybe turning them away for a little bit, mm. possibly. Um, but yeah, I would definitely not get back on and see if you can get other opinions. Can you do any more scans? Can you do any yeah. more x-rays? I mean, depending, it's like financial as well, obviously. Yeah, like you if your horse to... is insured or not and stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, 100% insurance as well. It is really hard. But yeah, I would definitely, yeah, I think second opinion is the first thing I'd do. Um, if that opinion is the same, maybe try turning them away for a little bit. Mm, maybe she's then... gone a bit sour to yeah, it. Yeah, maybe a bit sour. That's um, a good point. Um, but then, yeah, normally yeah. if you think it's not right, it's probably not right. I was going to say that. Yeah, they're probably not happy. Yeah. Um, and don't let other people's opinions let you change your mind saying kick, yeah. kick through it. Kick it on, kick it on. Like, no, it's never going to work. Never, ever no. going to work. 100% not. Um, go with your gut. Get some second opinions. Turn them away for a bit. Maybe they've gone sour. Maybe having a bit of time off might do them good. Mm. Um, but definitely just don't ignore it. D- yeah. yeah. It's such a shame um, though, like having... But a horse, I can't remember what she said. Only had it not long, I don't think. Mm. I don't know if she said. Yeah. Um, and then run oh, into issues. Oh, but that is horses, isn't Honestly, it? Honestly, horrible. Like I would, it's so draining. That yeah, mm. that sounds really draining. Um, but have yeah, you ever like had you said, any issues like that with any? Of um, I no, I've been very lucky. Yeah. Granted, I've only Sonic was like my first horse that mm. I owned properly, so I've not had horses as long as some other people have. Yeah. So I feel like I have been very lucky and touch wood, it carries on like that. Um, but unfortunately, it's just one of those things. And mm. that's horrible to hear because if someone said that to me, I'd be like, oh, shut up. But <laughs> it is literally horses are like that. Mm. Um, and yeah, just don't kick it through the pain. Yeah. Don't kick it through Go the pain. Go with your gut, I think, yeah, on that 100%. one. Yeah, Go with your gut. Yeah. Right, ready for a dilemma too? Yeah, go for it. Okay, this one is called, Is It My Place to Say? I don't shut up, so let's see. <laughs> so, so definitely, yeah. it's your place. <laughs> it definitely my place. <laughs> right. I'm on a livery yard with around 20 liveries and the owners live on site. The owners, I need a name from you, a boy name and a girl name. Owners, okay. Yeah. Oh, boy name. Um, Jed. Jed, okay. Girl name. Oh, girl name, Poppy. Poppy, Jed and Poppy. Okay, so the owners are Jed and Poppy and they live on site. Mm -hmm. Um, They're a youngish couple in their early 30s and have been together since I've moved here. Jed, no, sorry, not Jed. What was the girl name? Poppy. Poppy Poppy often goes away on business trips as she's a physio who gives seminars and will often travel to give lectures um, and is often away for around five days. That's quite a nice little job, I think. Yeah. Travelling, giving a couple of lectures. Yeah, come back. Yeah. Nice. Although, saying that, I feel like staying in a hotel all the time wouldn't be ideal. You yeah, know, like no, with cooking yeah. food and yeah. stuff. Like if you're in a hotel room. Really. And living out of a bag all the time. Yeah, yeah I not ideal. Yeah. But anyway, that's her job. <laughs> but <laughs> for the last two or three trips, we've noticed the same car parked in the car park. I didn't recognise it um, to be one of the liveries. I literally, um, I initially thought that Jed had got a new car. However, I didn't see it again once Poppy had returned. 
It's now several weeks later and Poppy has gone away again and I noticed the same car appear. Bit sus, isn't it? <laughs> um, this time I spotted who got out of the car. It was an attractive woman who also looked to be around her 30s. I noticed that the car... I noticed the car was there for the entire week and then as soon as Poppy had returned from her trip, the car was gone. What do we think about that so far? Sus. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. Is my yard owner having an affair? Am I reading too much into this? Is it my place to say, or should I just keep my mouth shut? Thoughts <laughs> day. Oh my God. Um, it depends your relationship with Poppy. Yeah. Because you know, some people, you know, they really don't speak to the, their yard mm. people at all. Whereas some people, every day they have a real good chat. I feel like if they live on site, they probably see have a good relationship. Them, yeah, if they live on site, you'd think you'd see them quite often. Um, oh, that's really hard. That Do you know what I think? I think I would. I think, right, if I was Poppy, I'd want to know. Oh, even if it was nothing yeah just just a little oh there was a car here yeah yeah was that even that as a livery it's a bit weird like just random cars popping up 100 you don't want random people coming in and out yeah yeah i i think i would i wouldn't have any say on their relationship or anything like that i wouldn't get personal i would just say oh like someone's been here you know like really casual and then you might be like oh yeah yeah yeah, it was so and so Mm. oh it was so and so saying for a bit or she might be like who? Who? I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I've just seen this. I thought I'd tell you. Okay, so yeah. l- let's role play. I'm Poppy. Okay. What are you saying to me? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your husband is having an affair. No, I wouldn't say that. I'd say, oh, how was your trip? Like, how was it? Oh, it was good, thanks. Oh, really? Oh, that's really good. That's really nice. Um, The other day, I was trying to park my car closer to the yard. I had to get some stuff out of my car but i couldn't get in because someone was parked on the driveway but the, the car was there all week oh yeah but it wasn't like a relative or anything then. that's actually quite a like, nice yeah. way to put it actually yeah, like, fair. yeah that was fair. Good. like really easy even if it's not don't lie yeah and you're not calling anyone out yeah, or you're anything not calling you're just anyone literally out. Have to park there it's everything in. to do with me so i'm not lying yeah i mean i might have told a white lie because maybe i didn't need to put my yeah. car there that was good yeah Oh, but who, that car was there all week, though. It was so annoying. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Who was it? <laughs> Some girl with your husband. <laughs> Some 30-year-old yeah. chick. <laughs> get her out. She's not invited her. No. Yeah, get I her think gone. that's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Fair. Yeah. Okay, right. The podcast is called Beyond the Stable. Yep. So I have a question for you. Yep. I want to know what you do beyond the stable. And uh, your dog walking doesn't count because we spoke okay. about that too much. Yeah. I want to know like another hobby that you've done in the past or something you do now that's like something that you really enjoy. I used to dance oh. for like years. What like kind of dancing? Um, I Actually, you do... can see that in TikToks. <laughs> I used to do contemporary quite a lot. Contemporary yeah. dancing. Um, but yeah, I danced for like when I was a child up until I was 15. Okay. Yeah. But I used to dance quite a lot. Um, what else? Outside. Oh, I love my family. Mm. I really love my family. I see um, your mum in your TikToks, yeah. like in your lives all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. She's so Literally, good. I love it. Yeah, my family are mental. Like, they are <laughs> actually crazy. But you have siblings? Yeah, I'm one of three girls. Oh, okay. I'm the middle child, so I'm the odd one out. Right. They always make fun of me for it. Um, yeah, so... Are, you, are your siblings horsey at all? My oldest one is. My okay. youngest is the complete opposite. Like, she's going to fashion college. Right. Hair and makeup done every single day. Like, the prettiest one out of everyone. Mm. Like, yeah, so well, me and my sister are the horsey ones. Yeah. But then also me and my sister are so different. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, outside of horses and dogs. Dancing. Yeah. But I don't do that anymore. I yeah. don't do anything like that. But catch me in the club. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't even go clubbing anymore. But like when I am, yeah, that rare occasion, I do love it. Um, and yeah, being with my family, definitely a home girl, hundred yeah. percent. Um, what else? I feel like there's more to me. Um, I mean, you're a very busy person. To I be know. Best, so. I feel like that's, I'm just, I'm just thinking now, like. 
do with my No, life. you've got your, your dogs, your socials, yeah, your yeah. horses. That's loads. Georgie and Katie as well. They are like my go-to. We are on the phone 24-7. Like, I always you see that. Yeah. Like, yeah. like when you're on live, yeah. they're ringing me. Stop yeah. ringing me. That's so funny. <laughs> Katie Plummer's just text me. Yeah, that's it. Like, yeah, those two girls are a lot of my life as well. We spend on, we're on the phone all day, every day. Before you arrived, we're on the phone for a good 45 minutes. That's so like, nice to have fun. Yeah, like they oh. are my girls through and through. So, yeah. Do you met them from school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cute. Oh, sorry, no, Georgie was from school. Katie kind of like through Georgie mm. and now we're at the same yard together. Oh, nice. So, yeah. yeah. That is about the end of the podcast. Ah, As you know, we are traveling yeah. up and down the country, yep. speaking to lots of different people, influencers, professionals. Yeah. Oh. Who would you like to see on the pod? <gasps> oh, oh my God, okay. Do you know what? Put you on the spot a bit there. No, do you know what? <laughs> no horse hand. Okay. Do you guys know who that is? Yeah. yeah. She, I, I really like her. Yeah. I really like her. And I think she's got, she's been through a lot yes. with her horse. I think she also is someone who is kind of new to the industry mm-hmm. in terms of like showing her horsey life on socials. Yeah. So a bit like me. Um, she, I feel like she's really down to earth as well. I think she'd yeah. be good. And she'd have a lot to speak about with what she's been through. Yeah, 100%. Affie. Um and yeah, she's recently started up YouTube as well. Yeah, um, I do love No Horse, and yeah. that's a really good one. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Really good one. So, well, thank you for being on the pod. Honestly, thank you for having me, and well done. You. you should be so proud of yourself. Thank you. Genuinely, I love this brand. Like, oh. I love your brand. Such good quality, and you Aww. guys are the best. You're the best. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for you though. I'm excited to see who you bring on. Yeah, hopefully no horse hand. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you all thank for you watching. So much. Yeah, thank you guys for um, watching. Guys, if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you're giving us a rating, yeah, subscribing, following if you're on YouTube, subscribe to us. Mm. Um, yeah, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.